You know, Sultan Carlo Forte brought you right here. I'll never get tired of seeing Italian sultans. What if the Reconquista failed? Hi everyone, and welcome to today's video where we're gonna be checking out what would happen if the Reconquista failed. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 20% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So as you can see, it's December 1st, 1444, and this is our scenario. Basically, the Christian forces have failed to expel the Muslim forces from Europe. Now, I base this map slightly on the Antebellum mod, which sort of covers this scenario, but in a much more drastic fashion, whereas my scenario over here focuses only on certain areas. So let's take a look at everything that has changed. Of course, first you can notice that we have Andalusia owning most of Iberia, with some smaller Christian kingdoms in the north, such as Galicia, Leon, Asturias, Castile right here, Navarra, and Aragon is still present too. Portugal still exists too in Madeira and the Azores. So basically this is everything Andalusia has conquered. These guys over here have failed to push them back. We can also see the religious map mode in Iberia basically let's say that Andalusia has been converting all the way up to here. This is how far they've gotten. They do still have a bunch of Christian provinces in their lands. Of course due to so many years of this region being under their rule, the culture has also changed and this is now the Andalusian culture. Basically every province over here is Andalusian and Sunni. Some of these provinces up here, they still have their original cultures and they're Catholic. Let's say they conquered those recently or something like that. So that's why they haven't changed the culture and the religion yet. Moving to the Balearic Islands, we have the Sultanate of Majorca. Yes, they exist too. I thought it was a fun little addition. These islands are all Sunni now, so they have converted that. We can also see that Andalusia have allied Morocco and that Majorca have allied Tunis and those are the changes in Iberia. We have six Christian kingdoms, seven if you count Portugal over here, and two Muslim Sultanates, Andalusia and Majorca. Moving over to Italy we have the Sultanate of Sicily. We can see that they've allied Austria which should be pretty funny. These guys have been doing converting as well. If we take a look at the culture map mode we can see that they have converted the culture of Naples to Sicily. Sicilian. And if we go into the religion map mode, we can see that they have also converted some provinces over here to Sunni as well. Not everything, these provinces up here, they're still Christian. Let's say they conquered them recently, just like the north of Andalusia right here. And those are the changes for this map. Those are the nations we need to watch out for. Andalusia, Majorca, and Sicily, and the Iberian Christian kingdoms. Galicia, Leon, Asturias, Castile, Navarra, Aragon, and Portugal. So what do you think will happen? in this scenario. Will the Muslim states be dominant and continue to expand even further and spread their religion in Europe? Will the Iberian nations push back and reconquer Iberia in this timeline as well? Will the Italian nations push back Italy and reconquer this? What will happen with Majorca? Will another Christian force in Europe try to expel them? Will a crusade be called? Anything is possible in this scenario. So leave your predictions in the comments below. And as you know, this save file on December 1st, 1444 will be available to all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel so you can play it for yourself and let's get the scenario started. We'll check back in in 1480. So now it's January 1st, 1480, and let's take a look at everything that has changed. And to be honest, uh, not a lot has changed. First, in Iberia, we can notice that Castile have expanded. They started off in these three provinces right here. They've taken this province from Navarra, and they've taken this province from Lyon. Meanwhile, Lyon have taken these two provinces from Galicia. Those are the only changes there. We have Portugal right here, and they haven't picked exploration ideas. Maybe this is because I had to re release them, so something got messed up over there, but they haven't picked exploration. Castile have picked exploration, they do have a coastal province, so they can go colonizing. Meanwhile, Aragon got Navarra in a personal union, and they have a pretty strong ally, France, who is in a war with Burgundy right now in the French conquest of this province. Andalusia have also allied Majorca, they were already allied with Morocco, and they've allied Clemson. Majorca have allied Andalusia, Sicily, and Tunis, and Sicily have allied Austria, Majorca, and Tunis as well. They have lost a province. They lost the province of Naples to the Pope in a war about five years ago, and they're currently at war with Bohemia in the Austrian Bohemian Unification War. So, Austria already has Hungary as a junior partner, and they're about to get Bohemia too. So, we're gonna have a really powerful Austria this game. And the Mamluks are expanding a lot more than usual, so we may even have a very powerful Mamluks this game too. Something else that's cursed is Novgorod is allied to Sweden and Lithuania 
Lithuania. Both of these nations are independent and Lithuania is actually claiming the throne of Poland. So we won't really have a strong Russia this game. Maybe we won't even have Russia at all. Sicily has been doing converting by the way. They have converted these provinces over here which were Catholic. They will probably convert this one too. And uh, I don't know if the Pope can uh, convert Naples. Let's wait and see. These are the lands that Andalusia desires. So not a whole lot. They desire these lands somewhat and they really want these lands in France down here. Sicily really wants some provinces from the Pope and from Aragon and some provinces in the Balkans as well. Mallorca, well, they want some provinces too in France and from Aragon as well. So now it's January 1st, 1530. Another 50 years have passed and we are in the age of reformation. Let's take a look at everything that's happened, starting with the reformation itself. Here's the religious map mode. As we can see, not too much converting going on yet. We do have a Protestant center of reformation here and the reformed one over here and another Protestant one in Ireland and another one in Provence over here. So three Protestant ones and one reformed one, two more reformed ones should pop up and maybe England will become Anglican or maybe even Scotland. We can see that Andalusia has expanded. They've taken these three provinces up here. All of them were originally owned by Galicia, but they were conquered by Lyon later, and I guess they took them from Lyon. Castile have also expanded over here a bit, and they've lost this province once again to Navarra, and Aragon has this province, so I'm guessing Aragon declared on Castile, in fact. They are supporting the independence of Navarra right now, who are 100% disloyal. Oh, they're having their independence supported by Tunis and Castile. So uh, yeah, I think Aragon, uh, I think they're gonna be in a bit of trouble soon. Either way, going over to Italy, we can see that Sicily is almost completely occupied. They declared a war against the Pope in the Sicilian reconquest of Naples. You guys remember that the Pope took this back? Now, even though they're occupied, they're definitely gonna be winning this war. As we can see, they're taking back their provinces here. They've already conquered Naples and the Pope is just standing in Rome doing nothing. So yeah, uh, Sicily will be expanding pretty soon. They have converted all of their provinces that were Catholic. Tunis has grown a bit in this direction. The Ottomans have taken this for some reason. They've started pushing into the Mamluks. So no strong Mamluks despite my uh, earlier prediction. But we have a very very powerful Austria. They have inherited Burgundy as we can see right here and up here. Uh, England has Ghent for some reason. All right we'll get back to that. But they also have Hungary and Bohemia. They're already integrating Hungary and they've even taken provinces from Poland over here. I guess they're trying to create uh, the Austria-Hungary borders about 300 years too early. Of course, Andalusia won't be converting these provinces to Sunni because, well, I do think they have the Demi estate, whereas Sicily don't have the Demi estate because they're a Western technology nation and Andalusia is a Muslim tech nation, so Sicily don't have the Demi estate, which means they will be converting provinces. Portugal have taken exploration and expansion for their second and third idea groups, and both them and Castile have started colonizing a bit, even France too, and even England as well. Well, this is what Andalusia desires. Ooh, maybe they will be declaring some more wars. They do have a militarist ruler. And this is what Sicily desires. They also have a militarist ruler. Meanwhile, Mallorca is just chilling on their islands right here. So it's 1580 and oh boy, do we have a lot to unpack. So let's get right into it, straight into Andalusia. You guys remember the last time I showed this map mode, which provinces they wanted to conquer. It was pretty much this along with these northern Tunisian provinces, which you can see that now they own. And look at how much they've conquered. Basically, they've taken the entire Tunisian coast with the exception of this province right here. So they completely obliterated Tunis and the two Sicilies and Mali in that same war. But not only are they bigger, you can also notice that they're smaller. Well, Lyon has conquered a lot of provinces from them. How did this happen? Well, the War of the Protestant League happened. And if we click on Andalusia, they were on the Protestant side. We can see which nations they have a truce with. So all of these orange nations right here were on the Catholic side of the War of the Protestant League. If we click on Austria, we can see which nations were on the Protestant side. Not a whole lot, as we can see. France and Andalusia are the strongest ones. Basically, the Protestant side was extremely weak and it was a decisive victory for the Catholics, where Andalusia lost so much many provinces to Lyon and they have been converting those provinces as we can see. Andalusia also managed to fully annex Aragon. They owned these three provinces over here and these two right here. Now you may notice that well Castile doesn't exist it's just Lyon and Navarra. Actually Castile 
Seal does exist, they are located in these two islands right here. This is their capital. They are colonizing. We can see they have some colonies here. But Andalusia are also colonizing. This is what they own right here. These three provinces. Friesland is also colonizing. They have the Ivory Coast. So is France. We also have a Scotland over here. We have some more Castilian provinces down here. France is pushing into Brazil. It is going pretty slowly. And Leon is colonizing as well. They have some provinces here. And Andalusia have some more provinces in the Caribbean. So that is what the colonization situation is looking like. And Norway is also colonizing. Good job, Norway. So the Reconquista not happening is going well for Andalusia, but at the same time, not so well. At least that was the fault of the War of the Protestant League. Meanwhile, Sicily formed the two Sicilies. Of course, they would do that. No reason not to take the decision. They are still a Sultan and Muslim, and they have conquered some provinces from the Pope, as we can see right here. They've also pushed into the Balkans, owning these two provinces that Venice starts out with. This is what the religion situation looks like. The Protestant Reformation is still going on. Not a whole lot of converting in the HRE, so not as strong as it can be. I do think England and Scotland have both rejected the option to become Protestant. By the way, Catholic is the official faith of the HRE. Oh yeah, Andalusia also full annexed Mallorca, so goodbye Mallorca. So now it's 1630, we are in the age of absolutism, the Protestant Reformation has stopped, this is what it's looking like, pretty weak to be honest, lots of nations are still Catholic and it will continue to shrink even after this point in my opinion. First let's take a look at the two Sicilies, they are sucking right now, they lost two provinces, well actually they lost a couple of provinces to the Ottomans, so the Ottomans declared on Herzegovina who were like uh, right here, they were allied to the two Sicilies, and they took this province along with these two down here from the two Sicilies. Now they're losing to the Pope in the papal reconquest of Spoleto. So that's what it's looking like for them, not too good. You know, Sultan Carlo Forte Braccio right here, I'll never get tired of seeing Italian sultans. Either way, going down to Andalusia, they have lost Gibraltar to Great Britain, they are having a really good game and I'll get back to them soon but Andalusia have also expanded further in Tunis taking a bunch more provinces from them. So now Tunis are looking like this. They haven't attacked Lyon well because Lyon is a junior partner of France although France isn't very strong this game. They have lost these two subjects Armagnac and Auvergne. Armagnac has grown quite a bit and Britain is supporting their colonies independence. La Plata right here and uh, I do think Andalusia will be declaring on Lyon pretty soon either way. In other news Austria has lost a bunch of provinces to the Ottomans down here. They also have Savoy as a junior partner and they lost a lot of provinces up here to Great Britain. So that's where I'm coming from with the fact that they're very strong. They've conquered a lot into France and into the lowlands as well. They even have Gilray. Let's see, do they have claims on some of these provinces? No, but they have a bunch of claims over here. Andalusia is also colonizing even more down here. They do have Oyo as a subject. They're about to integrate them in August. So they will be growing in this region. I'm assuming if they can't in Europe and in the Maghreb. They are allied to Morocco. The Ottomans are blobbing really hard and uh, yep, they're about to decimate the Mamluks for a final time. Scotland's capital is in this province right here, so that's pretty funny. We have a bunch of nations colonizing South Africa, Andalusia, Castile and Britain. Remember Castile's capital is right here in Gran Canary. France is dominating South America, but not for long. La Plata is about to break free. Lyon is dominating this area right here. Britain has the Caribbean and the North American natives are as strong as ever. So now it's 1680 and things are getting even crazier. I mean, take a look at this map. Okay, let's start off with Andalusia. They have finally expanded into Lyon. In fact, they fought them twice after Lyon somehow broke free from their PU against France. And they've even started expanding in the French region, taking these three provinces over here. Like I told you guys, France was, uh, they weren't doing too well this game. In fact, they're actually at war with France right now in the Malian Jihad against France. Okay, well, that's not something you see every day. Mali declared on France. Obviously, they are allies to Andalusia, so that's what's going on right now. <laughs> in fact, Armagnac might emerge as the dominant power in France, not really since Austria have been pushing into France even more after they integrated their PU subject Savoy. So yeah, France are uh, sucking right now. Meanwhile, in Italy, the two Sicilies are suffering even more. They've lost a bunch of provinces to the Ottomans and a bunch of provinces to the Pope as well. So uh, it might be the end for them soon. Speaking of the Ottomans, they are going crazy, declaring on anyone and everyone. These are the provinces that they desire. Luckily, they have a diplomat right now, but they're still at war with Austria and Armagnac, Auvergne, the Palatinate and Russia. So uh, yeah, they're pretty confident in their abilities, I would say. 
say. Andalusia are continuing their colonization over here and down here as well, being split between them and Britain. We also have Andalusian Australia and Britain are pushing into Indonesia too. This is what South America looks like. La Plata from Chile after they broke free from France. We have Leonese Colombia, pretty cool. Will they immigrate outside of Europe too? In fact, let me see if Scotland still exists. Ah, they do. Their capital is St. Helena. Shout out Napoleon. Either way, they have one more province right here. Does Castile still exist? Um, I don't think so actually. I think Castile is gone. Play Crab Rave. But Portugal does still exist. Their capital is still Madeira. So now it's 1730. We are in the age of revolutions. Let's take a look at everything that has changed. Starting off with Andalusia, they finally taken the entirety, well almost the entirety, of the Iberian Peninsula and they've started pushing into France as well. They already had these three provinces when we last checked in. Now they have these two as well and some up here. Armagnac is gone. Now Auvergne has replaced them and France is even worse off. They have a tributary. Navajo is their tributary and they're in a war with Chimu right now. So that is how that is looking like. While we're here, we have Leonese Colombia. It's huge. Dutch Brazil and Dutch Colombia. French Brazil, French Peru and Chile. The two Sicilies seem to be slightly on the come up again they've taken provinces up here from uh, Tuscany and Ferrara as well so things are not looking too bad for them Andalusia if we click on the coalition map mode we can see all their provinces they have a bunch over here in West Africa and a lot over here in South Africa as well they're also colonizing Indonesia and you guys know they have Australia already Austria keeps getting pushed out of here but they keep pushing into here and some HRE nations are starting to get big like Brandenburg, Berg and Verdun. The revolution has spawned in Ming right here in Beijing as we can see it is converting provinces so I doubt we'll see European revolutionary nations but we might get some over here in Asia. Not very likely though but we'll have to see. Ming is doing pretty well themselves they have expanded over here and in the Philippines and even in Japan. So that is our current situation. Reformation pretty weak this game. So it's 1780 right now and uh we have a lot to unpack so let's just jump right into it first let's focus on this situation right here i'm sure you guys can notice that the ottomans aren't having a good time remember how last time they got declared on by russia and austria well they turned the tide and they managed to win that war after that they pushed into europe some more specifically in italy and uh now they're in a situation like this they are fighting five wars at the same time they're not losing all of them but they are fighting five wars so they declared on Austria in that first war and they were doing pretty well actually occupying some provinces over here but during that time Russia and the Mughals declared on them so they were in those two wars after that Brandenburg which had this coalition against them decided to declare a coalition war against them so that's why you see everything over here being occupied by Brandenburg during that time Andalusia decided to declare on Tunis who were an ally of the Ottomans so that's that war and then finally Nuremberg over here along with Mainz, Saxony and Rothenburg decided to declare their own coalition war against the Ottomans. These guys right here versus the Ottomans. That's pretty funny to see. So they're not having a very good time right now even though they are the most powerful nation in the world. Going over to our original nations that we focus on we have Andalusia. They have expanded even more in France so they are doing very well in that regard. They also have a couple of colonies right now now like Australia, Mexico, Alaska, California, and Peru. And they have a tributary. These are the ideas they have right now. Trade economic exploration, quantity expansion defensive, innovative quality. The two Sicilies, well, they were doing all right. Basically the same as the last time we checked in. Right now they're at war with Andalusia because they're allied to Tunis. So that's something that's happening. This is what the rest of Europe looks like. Verdun is actually doing really good. And Britain has decided to finish off France. Where is Lyon? We still have Leonese Colombia well let's click on them click on them here and then click on Leon and click here once again so much clicking we can see that their capital is in the society islands that's right Leon exists right here what a roller coaster man what a roller coaster and they have two colonies Colombia and Mexico so uh shout out to Leon man they're still doing really good 
does Castile still exist? Let's jump over to St. Helena, where Scotland is still located. They're allied to Utrecht. Is this the only province they have? Let me check real quick. No, they have one more province right here in Walvis Bay. Where's Portugal? Let's find Portugal. Oh, they still exist in the Azores. Mm, they're allied to Zazao and their capital is in Fernando Po. Oh my god. Shout out to Scotland, shout out to Portugal, and shout out to Lyon. So that's what's been going on in the past 50 years. No nation actually became revolutionary. You know, it spawned in Ming, but it fizzled out. And it's January 3rd, 1821. Time to wrap up this campaign and go over what happened in this scenario. As you guys know, this was what if the Reconquista failed. I created Andalusia, Mallorca, and the two Sicilies made them Muslim nations. And there were a few Iberian nations up here, such as Galicia, Asturias, Leon, Castile, and Navarra and Aragon too. And that was the setup. Let's take a look at Andalusia first. In my opinion, they were just a glorified Spain, pretty much doing most of the stuff that Castile or Spain would do. They have conquered the entirety of Iberia, which is excellent, except for Gibraltar. I don't know how they lost this to Great Britain, but it happened about 200 years ago and they have pushed a lot into France, taking these two provinces down here and a bunch more up here. They've also expanded in Sardinia and Corsica as well, taking them from Genoa and Aragon and they've also conquered Majorca. They were allied to Morocco the entire game, which sort of prevented them from going this way, but they have full annexed the entire area where Tunis and Tlemcen were located. That's not everything they did though, they also took up exploration and expansion ideas. Let's take a look at where they've expanded. Basically, they have these provinces over here in Western Africa, these provinces right here in Southern Africa, and they have colonized quite a lot in the Philippines and Indonesia. These are all the provinces they own. Their colonies are Andalusia, Andalusian Australia right here. They also have Andalusian Peru, Mexico, California, and Alaska. Those are their five colonies and they're all crown colonies. So a very successful game for Andalusia in my opinion. Of course they're a Muslim tech nation so they won't be converting Catholic provinces. Going over to Mallorca, well they don't exist. That was their campaign. The two Sicilies started off well taking lots of provinces from the Pope and stuff like that and even in the Balkans but then they got into a war with the Ottomans and uh now we have Ottoman Italy. Let's take a look at Rome. It's still Catholic. Of course, the Ottomans won't be converting it either. But the two Sicilies do still exist. They have their original starting lands over here and over here, and they've conquered a bit up in Emilia Romagna and Tuscany. So a mildly successful game for them. They lost provinces over here, but got more over here. So they're basically at the same level that they started out with. In Europe, Austria was very successful getting Hungary, Bohemia, and the Burgundian inheritance, but then they lost a lot of provinces to the Ottomans. I mean, look at this. Ottoman South Germany right here. Poland and Lithuania have sucked. Sweden is pretty powerful. They even have Pomerania over here. Bremen formed Hanover, which is great. And Austria managed to pass two reforms. The Catholic side won in the Protestant League. Great Britain took some provinces in Europe, but they weren't very successful in colonizing, only taking the Caribbean. Brazil and Chile were French colonies. Now they're independent and they're fighting each other. We have Leonese Colombia. Let's check out where Lyon actually is. Yep, they're still in the society islands. Their capital is right here, their only province outside of colonies. And we have Portugal right here. Where's their capital? Let's take a look. It's in well, it's right here, actually. This is Portugal's capital, and they have a few more provinces like this one. Does Scotland still exist in St. Helena? They do. Huge shout out to Scotland and Lyon and Portugal, like I said, OPMs that have emigrated halfway around the world, or maybe the entire way around the world. Or is that just coming back to their original place? Hmm, think about it. But the Ottomans had a really successful game. They were blobbing hard the entire time. They faced a couple of coalitions and a couple of defeats, but they are huge. Definitely the MVP outside of the nations we were focusing on. The Timurids from the Mughals, which is pretty cool. Prome is pretty big. And Ming had a pretty nice game as well. Russia is huge too. Taking a look at the religious map mode, this is what it looks like. Of course, the two Sicilies were converting since they are Western tech and they don't have the Demia state. Andalusia wasn't converting. So this is what everything looks like. A weak Protestant reformation, only a few Protestant and reformed countries. Britain, neither England or Scotland went Anglican 
and they're Catholic right now. And this is what the entire world religion map mode looks like, mostly Catholic. In South America, some Sunni in North America, thanks to Andalusia. Mayan is doing pretty well and fetishes too. This is what this side of the world looks like, pretty standard. Taking a look at the culture map mode, we have Andalusian, the provinces I already made Andalusian for Andalusia. And they also have some over here, which they colonized, some other stuff that they colonized. Basically no culture conversion in Europe. These are just their colonies. And the two Sicilies also haven't converted culture, only the province of Naples, which I converted for them. Let's see if there's something out of the ordinary, but it doesn't look like it. Everything is pretty standard all around the world, as far as I can see. Oh, except uh, the entirety of South America is French. Well, that's pretty strange. Like I said, there was no revolution and nothing too out of the ordinary in the dynastic map mode, except that Poland has England's dynasty and so does Berg. Sweden also has Russia's dynasty and Yemen has the Osmanoglus. The number one great power is the Ottomans, followed by Andalusia, Ming, Great Britain, Russia, Austria, the Mughals, and uh... What? And uh, this nation right here, so shout out to Koweta, or however it's pronounced, the MVP for native nations. And a shout out to Holland for being pretty successful in colonizing as well. The Ottomans have the largest army with almost 1.5 million troops, followed by Andalusia, Great Britain, Ming, Austria, Hanover, Koweta, Korea, Russia, and so on. The Ottomans also have the highest income, followed by Andalusia, Ming, Great Britain, Austria, the Mughals, Malacca, Hanover, Russia, and so on. So, what would happen if the Reconquista failed? Well, Andalusia would basically become Spain. That was pretty expected. They did way better than Spain in continental matters in Europe and North Africa, but slightly worse than them in colonizing, I would say, although they still did really well. The Iberian nations obviously fell to Andalusia and they didn't manage to do the Reconquista again. The nation of Majorca sucked and the two Sicilies were, well, pretty stagnant, I would say. So if the Reconquista failed, Andalusia would just replace Spain, at least in this scenario. If you want to play your own version of this scenario, this save file will be available in 1444 for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel. Let me know in the comments below what's the next what if scenario that I should do. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 20% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.